Today we're going to discuss how to graph linear equations in slope-intercept form. And of course, if your equation isn't already in slope-intercept form, you could make it be in slope-intercept form. Okay, so talking about slope-intercept form. Here is slope-intercept form just written as y equals mx plus b. And then here we have slope-intercept form written in function notation f of x equals mx plus b. These are equivalent, as hopefully you know, f of x is the same thing as y. It's what I call just fancy notation to rewrite y as f of x. Okay, so we're gonna graph each line. I'm gonna need my ruler, so I'll get my ruler out. And then um, to graph each line, we're gonna name the slope and the y-intercept first. Even though these instructions are backwards, this says graph each line, then name the slope and the y-intercept. We're actually gonna name the slope and the y-intercept and then graph the line. You can do it either way, but I don't know how you could graph the line without the slope and the y-intercept. Okay, so as I look at this, using the form y equals mx plus b. I know my slope here is negative 3 fourths and my y-intercept is negative 5. So this is what I tell students when you're um, graphing lines using slope-intercept form. Which of these comes first alphabetically, M or B? Well, I'm sure and certain that all of you know that B comes first. So that's where you start graphing. You graph your y-intercept first. Okay, so this is my y-intercept. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. That means, y-intercept means that this line crosses the y-axis at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So at negative 5 is where this line intersects the y-axis, the y-intercept. Okay, now I need to graph a slope of negative 3 fourths. Here's how I graph slope. Remember, rise over run is your slope. And we've got negative 3 fourths. And you're going to have teachers teach us differently, and that's fine. We're all different, and we have different learners. So we just have to teach the best way we can for the students that we have. But for me, I always rise first. So I rise three, one, two, three. So I'm talking about from this point here. I rise three. Then my run, that's where I take care of this negative. Am I going to run positive forward direction or negative forward direction? Well, my slope is negative. So from that point of one, two, three, I'm going to run four in a negative direction. One, two, three, four. Now that's all you have to do, but I'm going to do one more because even with a ruler, sometimes I don't make a very straight line. So I'm going to rise one, two, three, and run one, two, three, four, and I'm right there on the edge. Okay, and now I have my ruler or straight edge, and I'm going to graph. The, I think I need to do it this way so I can see those points. I don't know. A little difficult. Uh, did I get it? Not quite, but I'm close. And see, I missed just a little bit. It's very difficult. Um, computers generate beautiful lines. We humans, sometimes not so much. But that's okay. I think my second attempt was better. But I'm not going to judge anyone on how they draw their line. Just try your best. And I think you can see where I put my dot, so you could count and see the slope is negative 3 fourths. Okay, so this is the equation of the line y equals negative 3 fourths x minus 5. Let's go on to number 2. For question 2, my slope is 3 and my y-intercept is 2. So remember, you should go to your y-intercept first. My y-intercept is 2, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start at positive 2 on the y-axis. 1, 2. 
From there, I'm going to do a slope of three. And remember, slope is rise over run. Now, I only have three. How do I turn three into a fraction? Remember, you put three over one. Okay, so let me rise three. For me, rise is always go up. You're welcome to go down three. I just don't teach it that way, and I'm, I may do one point like that every now and then, but I'll show you. So I'm going to rise three. One, two, three. I'm going to run one in a positive direction. I'm going to do that again. Rise one, two, three, and run one in a positive direction positive direction. Now how does that work if you go down first? So you go down one, two, three, which would re represent negative three. And this is slope is positive three. So to make that a positive three, you'd have to go left one. Negative three over negative one is positive three. So we're still in line with my graph correctly. So I would go down one, two, three, left one. And then I'm going to attempt to connect those dots. Focus on the word attempt and draw my line. And that's the graph of y equals 3x plus 2. Okay, moving on to the next one. y equals x plus 1. Slope is 1. 1 is understood to be here. y intercept is 1 as well. So slope is 1, y-intercept is 1. Okay, now, um, I'm going to graph my y-intercept first. Remember, b comes first in the alphabet. So I'm going to graph my y-intercept first. So I'm going to go to the origin and go up 1 on the y-axis. And then rise and run for my slope. Remember, rise over run is slope. Oh, rise over run. And so I'm going to have 1 over 1. So I'm going to rise 1, run 1 to the right. Rise 1, run 1 to the right. And so on and so forth. You may also go down, run 1, 1 to the left. Down and to the left makes that a positive. I like to draw multiple ones because um, my graph can tend to be crooked. I turn my paper sometimes. I do believe it's my personal preference. I ask my students to do this, that your line should be the length of your graph. Notice I did not just draw from here to here, nor did I just draw from here to here. Your line should be that entire um, area that you've drawn for your coordinate plane, and you should also have arrows on the end of your line. If you just draw, like if you have here and here, and you just draw that, that's a line segment. So make sure to put arrows on the ends, ends of your line as well. Okay, now, my slope for number 4 is negative 1. Negative 1 is understood to be there. And then my y-intercept is negative 4. Okay, now, remember we're going to start with the y-intercept. That's negative 4. So I'm going to go to the origin and go down 4. One, two, three, four. And then my slope is negative one. That means rise one, run one to the left. Whoa. Rise one, run one to the left. Rise and run. Rise and run. I had a teacher that would say up and over, up and over. That's how I remember slope. I remember that from eighth grade. Or you go down and to the right down to the right. Okay, then I'll grab my straight edge and connect those dots. And 
not too bad. Okay. Now, number five. There's not a Y. Hmm. Number six has a Y. Number five doesn't have a Y. This is when you have to remember that this is a vertical line. When you only have an X without a Y, then you have a vertical line. How do you graph a vertical line? Well, this says X equals negative three. So from the origin, go to negative three, one, two, three, on the X axis. And then is X negative three here? Yes, here, yes, here, yes. Everywhere on this vertical line, X is negative three, and you don't have to draw all those dots. Um, and then you just draw that line. I got a little off down there at the bottom. That's okay. So that is x equals negative 3. Now how about this one? We can say this, this is in slope-intercept form because remember the slope is 0. There's no x, so the slope is 0. And the y-intercept is 2. So I'm going to go to 2 on the y-axis. And I'm going to rise none, run 1 to the right. Rise none, run 1 to the right. Or remember... When you just have a Y without an X, then that is a horizontal line with a slope of zero. I got that one good. I'll show you something really quickly before I end this video. Here's how I remember that a horizontal line has a slope of zero. So a horizontal line, what number does this letter look like? Well, that O looks like a zero. So a horizontal line has a slope of zero. And thankfully, the word vertical does not have an O in it. So I know a vertical line um, is one that is vertical and does not have a slope of zero. That's undefined. A horizontal line has a slope of zero. Okay, I hope that helps.